back to learning with Lunchy. Uh, so today we're going to focus on the last level of the group of the five levels that we talked about in previous episodes. We're talking about organisms and all their functions that got them to this point. So cells interact to make tissue. Tissue interacts to make different organs and organ systems and all of that works together to make features that everyday animals you see, including plants, use to survive. So we're going to take a look at a few examples today. So we take our first example here, our volunteer. This is Obi. This is an Obi one. Guinea pig number two, if you've been count keeping count. And we're going to take a look at some of his unique features that make him a guinea pig. So the first one is, is the potato shape. Um, all guinea pigs have this standard low set shape, kind of smaller legs. If you look, smaller legs, they're hard to see, but he got little legs. Makes them squat, so they're close to the ground. This helps them run quicker, get away from predators, because one, they're at the bottom of the food chain, and two, it helps them dig. In the wild, they would normally be digging up food and digging for shelter. And uh, our domestic version here, not so much. We have ears. This is another feature common seen. Features are always something that is seen on every single animal of that species. So we have ears that are really good at hearing various things. We got big old claws on the rear feet. Okay. And the one thing guinea pigs have features the most is their teeth. Like most mammals, our teeth tend to be very specific. This is a rodent, so they tend to have massive incisors in order to gnaw through various seeds, wood, and plant material. As you can see, he is really excited. You might even be able to see his teeth at this angle. I'm not sure yet. But they're kind of like little wood chippers. They just chew and chew and chew. Their noses and eyesight isn't truly the best. But again, more features that help them to survive. Alright, so we're going to leave him alone. We're going to transition to some more creatures. Over here, it's my aquarium. We have quite a few living things inside the aquarium. First one is our little neon tetras. As you can see, their coloration is a feature, the blue and the red. And when they're together in a large enough swarm, predators can't actually distinguish individual fish. This is similar for zebras and many other types of animals out there. Mostly closer to the bottom, herbivores. Uh, we have a few snails somewhere on the rocks. Some of their main features, as you can see, is just the idea that they have a really hard shell. They're part of the mollusk family and provides armor for them to fight off predators. Uh, we have a lot of plants in here that are used to taking in nutrients in all forms of the ways. And if you look closely right over here, we have a little shrimp. Hard to see, but shrimps have an exoskeleton, again, designed to fight off predation and protect themselves. They also have to shed it, though, or else they get trapped in their own bodies. All right. What else? I think those are all the critters I got in my house. Uh, outside, we have plenty of birds. You can probably hear them in the trees. And birds have a ton of different natural features given to them by their various uh, organs and organ systems, such as the ability to fly, 
the ability to sing, communicate with their fellow birds, and basically grow. The main purpose of all these features for most organisms is to make sure they live long enough to reproduce to pass on their genetic material, which is commonly found in the cells of all these animals. This genetic material, if it's good enough to pass on, the animal will survive and pass on these genetic traits, and thus the cycle continues. Alright, well thank you for watching, that's it for learning with energy.